Uh, welcome back to another installment of the Oral History Project. Uh, here today with uh, Ray Boucher, Gary Young, and Daryl Dixon. And what we're here to talk about today, these are all uh, important businessmen in the early days of Kaiser, but we're here to talk about uh, Kaiser Rotary Club. And you get the impression that when you talk about uh, important merchants and important people in the community, you're also talking about Kaiser Rotary Club. So were any of you Rotarians in uh, various other chapters prior to Kaiser, or were you all brand new to it when you got when it, when this one started? All brand new. Oh, yeah. us, 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 we were all brand new. Uh, so what was it that, you know, there at the time in particular, there were all kinds of service-oriented organizations. So what drove wanting to... Uh, start a Rotary Club in Kaiser? Well, the original uh, guy that brought it up was uh, Eben Jenks. Uh, he had been in, involved in Rotary and uh, I think was transferred here uh, for, uh, at Boise Cascade and um, started approaching the different businesses in Kaiser about starting a Rotary Club. And I, I know in my case, didn't know a lot about it, but uh, he told us, you know, some of the, the fine points and uh, uh, it didn't take long. We had uh, uh, a great interest in it. And uh, uh, on April 28th, 1965, we were chartered with 26 members. So how does one go about getting chartered? Uh, you have to be sponsored by another Rotary Club, and uh, Salem Downtown Rotary Club uh, was our sponsor. Okay, so who were the, where was the, you, you got your first event was at the Marion Motor Hotel? That's, uh, yes. So original. where was that? Well, if, if you, what's the, the conference, what conference, do they call it now? Conference Center. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right a, downtown. That yeah. was the, the old Marion Hotel that... Yeah. I don't know, when did it burn in the early 70s? Yeah. And so um, who were the initial officers? The uh, initial, uh, Evan Jenks was the president, Ernie Fish, vice president, uh, Dr. Bob Davis, secretary, uh, Pat Valentino, treasurer, Ray Boucher, sergeant at arms, and the directors were Donald Driggs and Gurney Flesher. Oh, and just very quickly, can you tell us a little bit about uh, who these gentlemen were? And some are? Uh, well, Evan Jenks worked for Boise Cascade. Okay. Uh, Ernie Fish was a builder. Uh, Doc Davis was a uh, optometrist. Uh, Pat Valentino worked for PGE. Uh, Boucher had a jewelry store. Uh, Don Driggs worked for, uh, I can't remember which bank it was at the time. They First Interstate. He was First, First National then. And Gurney Flesher was the pre uh, principal at uh, McNary High School. Okay. So you've, you started, what was the, I guess the ultimate goal for, you know, especially people who were officers in the early days of want, of, of the Rotary Club? You know, you've got uh, you know, I'm reminded of, you know, the old saying, you've got, uh, you know, you have a kingdom, you have a country, you have a club, and now you've done this, and so what do you do with it? What was the, I guess, the impetus for people who wanted to join? And, uh, it, I think the, the easiest way for, for me to explain is the Rotary Club makes money and gives it away. Uh, Basically, if you, uh, we also, we have a lot of fun. You develop lifelong friendships with other Rotarians. We all have the same aims and uh, uh, in simple, simple terms, uh, mm -hmm. uh, raise money. Uh, uh, in Kaiser, since 1992, we're approaching $600,000 in donations to the schools. Uh, I mean, it, you, the list just goes on and on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a, we've had several fundraisers, but uh, for quite a few years now, we've had the our uh, auction, uh, 
raffle party, if you want to call it, and where we give away a $10,000 prize to the winner. But the, 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 the biggest share of it is for the Rotary Club to donate to uh, different organizations, schools. Uh, I mean, the, the list is extensive. And we'll get to how women became involved in the club here in a few minutes, but I'm interested in the idea of, you know, when this was started, did anyone even, were women even thought of as potential members? Was it a nationwide or international thing saying it's for men only, or did it not even come up? It never was. Came, never came up. Never, yeah, I don't never think came it ever, because it, it ever was came. a men's club. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know how they worked their way in, but they really... <laughs> uh, Dems failed to tell you that, you know, we, on our raffle, we take in about 60000 a year just uh -huh. from the raffle, you know, that's given away in the Kaiser from, from, to City Hall to Little League. To, but we also, we have so much fun at our rotary meetings. We have sergeant arms. We have mm, yeah. speakers. And it's just. It's a good organization, and we do give away a lot of money, but we also have a lot of good times. So what were some of the early projects that Rotary was involved with in terms of, you know, it seems like from pretty much from the day you got started, you were raising money, and you had a little bit of seed money, it sounds like, from some of the other clubs, and then, and as well as your members, and then you gave it away. So what were some of the early things that well, you guys well, did? Well, didn't we build a ticket booth at uh, McNary, and a food booth, and we built tables and benches for all the parks and everybody else. Uh, just all kinds of little work parties that we held. There's so no many. matter what it was. Well, let's drill in on McNary a little bit. It seems like a lot of what is at McNary yes. is, came from the Rotary Club. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit. If you go back to when McNary opened, uh, I guess no disrespect to the Salem-Kaiser School District, but they made the cheapest that they could. The Rotary Club was involved to building bleachers uh, and many other clubs and non-members, but the community basically built the, the bleachers because there were none. Mm -hmm. uh, the first scoreboard for the gym was purchased by Kaiser Rotary. Oh. Uh, and uh, that's a different subject if you look at the schools that were built after. McNary, but uh, at any rate, uh, that's some of the things early that uh, that we were involved in, and uh, golly, uh, it hasn't been too many years ago that we we built the the uh, restrooms and the concession stand uh, that's at the football field now. Mm -hmm. um, that's and it's all done donation of time and material. So outside of McNary, what are some of the things, if you were to drive around town or walk through the parks, that people might recognize today? Well, Ray mentioned the, the uh, uh, picnic benches, tables. Uh, we've scattered those all over all town. Over I mean, every park, I think, has one or two. Uh, Little League ball field, I know, has a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, Play, playground equipment uh, all around. I had a list here that's, good grief, three pages long, of uh, just to name some of them, Kaiser Parks, uh, Kaiser Schools, and that's all of them. Uh, you know, the, the elementary schools, high schools, uh, Kaiser Little League, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Jervis, uh, golly, is it just, there's so many of them. Uh, it, you can name every elementary school and uh, the junior highs. Uh, uh, and there's so many other things. Uh, Northwest medical teams, uh, Meals on Wheels, uh, National Honor Society. The Jaws of Life. Yeah, that was a big deal for yeah. the for We'd the fire buy those department. For the fire department. So how did they? How were they doing extrication after accidents before they got those? Mm -hmm. They were having a problem getting people crowbars. Out of cars. Crowbars, yeah. crowbars, <laughs> the only way they could. But uh, 
uh, that was an expensive thing that we bought for the fire department, the Jaws of Life. And yeah, I'm was. sure that saved lives. But uh, so, how were what were you into? Where'd you get the money for all of this in the early days, especially when you, before you weren't established? Thing that we were doing, having a. Uh, we had that big garage sale type deal. Got all the donations. Yeah. Um, hmm, trying to think sales. of some of the some of the other projects. Uh, started off with an auction of a car, wasn't it? Yeah. At one car time, an uh, appliance auction. Raise money from that, and then you know, there's the list of. You know, <laughs> it just goes on and on. Uh, and Jason, and, this was in. 1965 that we formed the Rotary and things were a little better then than when we first came out here in 53 and people were starting to get a few dollars and it wasn't quite so tough to assess um, so you at this time you were a little more established yeah a little more so let's talk about um, where'd you meet you met at uh, initially at your restaurant right we started off at Barry Steakhouse mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was with 26 members, and it grew so fast. I'm going to say within uh, four, five, six months, we moved to McNary, uh, and we were at McNary up until uh, it's been about a year, maybe it's been a little longer than that, that we now meet here at uh, the Civic Center. And one of the community rooms at the Civic Center actually came from a gift from Rotary, didn't it? Uh, so to speak. The supplies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Outfitted. They were actually couldn't afford after the building it. The city couldn't afford to mm. to furnish it, right. and uh, Kaiser Rotary uh, kicked in. Basically, it's going to end up a hundred thousand dollars. So, what role did now the the Rotary clubs played a role in how the city developed, particularly in the early days when you didn't have a taxing base or for that matter, hardly taxing authority, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you guys explain a little bit of that? Well, of course, you, you go back to when annexation took place, you know. Uh, we held forums and we held meetings between the city of Salem and, and us, town meetings. Mm -hmm. So people could acquaint themselves and uh, uh, we had an experience where a downtown person made a statement at a meeting that if you people don't, you'll be drinking sewage out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that inflamed the group to the point that no matter what happened, we were going to yeah. be on our own. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he regretted ever saying that. But, um, but you know, actually, Kaiser's worked pretty well with Salem since, I think. You know, it's as good as you can expect. And so all, through all this time, um, you're, you're coming up through the 80s, and how did the idea of, um, you know, we, we talked about when you founded it, the idea of women being uh, members just wasn't, just didn't come up. And so how did, how did that discussion evolve over time? Who was the first person to say, you know, uh, or maybe the first woman to express interest in membership? How did that discussion evolve? I don't think that Kaiser Rotary had anything to do with it. This was international. Yes. And it wasn't just Kaiser Rotary or Rotary International. I think this was a, a movement uh, that got started. Uh, golly, I wouldn't I'd hate to say figure out how, but mm -hmm. there's been a lot of things. Title IX that, this, that they have in the school system now that women should be involved in. And, uh, in 1989, they... Uh, Rotary International uh, opened it up for women. Was there ever, were there any critics of that? Oh, big time. I'm sure there were. <laughs> yeah. What uh, were the arguments made against allowing women to join? You well, first of all, you had to be a little more cautious what you said at your meetings. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't have to. Uh, Sergeant <laughs> Arms, uh, we used to do a lot of things that uh, we would let people get up and tell a story. If it was good enough, we wouldn't find them. <laughs> that, that kind of stuff had to quit, but it, I think that if we're going to find, if you talk to anybody in the Mid-Valley, they'll tell you that Kaiser Rotary is an example of 
the perfect Rotary Club. People came from all over and visited us because of the fun we had and what we did at our meetings, and people loved it. I think, too, that uh, the women have been an asset. Yeah, they since. Were, oh, just terrific. Yeah. Uh, so the last, and we'll wrap this up with talking about the, uh, the sergeant-in-arms role. Mm. And that seems to be the, uh, when I go to Rotary Club meetings now, it's the, the guy who's busting chops. Yeah. Was that how that started? Who, you were the first sergeant-in-arms, right. weren't you? I did it about 25 years. A long, long time. But, uh, and, and that was just a fun deal. That was oh, yes. nothing, nothing else. Yep. And a lot of times, you know, new people. Give me an example of uh, uh, Teddy and Agnes. You know Teddy. Mm -hmm. uh, when he first moved here, he didn't know a soul. But he desperately wanted into Rotary. And uh, he came in the store one day and he said, and I said, yeah, I'll get you an application. He'd come back and I hadn't got it and so forth and so on. But make a long story short, he came into Rotary and you get known by the sergeant arms getting after you, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, I had people just want to be fine because you get known and it's, everybody has fun doing it. And uh, sergeant arms at our club's been great. We've got some good ones now. And I did it for a lot of years, too, and uh, was often criticized because uh, I, somebody got sick Somebody had a heart attack. They got fined for it. <laughs> they, put it they put extra stress on us, and so yep. uh, you find them. But it was a means of recognition uh -huh. uh, quite often. Yep. You can find somebody because maybe one of their children did something special or they right. did something special. Uh, you recognized them and find them for it. <laughs> I can remember finding Daryl plenty of times. <laughs> well, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Daryl, what'd you do to deserve it? Well, anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. One one time uh, at McNary, I talked the um, chef into putting artificial grapes on the salad, and everyone was discussing how come these were artificial grapes. Was it McNary trying to save money? Uh, were they going to wash these and use them again? <laughs> Fortunately, nobody choked on one. <laughs> and I dug deep that day. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a lawsuit now. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, we want to thank you for watching another installment of the Oral History Project. I want to thank our participants for joining us. You can catch us on uh, Kaiser 23 on your Comcast cable. You can see us at kaisertv.com. You can also come down to the Kaiser Heritage Center and see these videos in the library and at the museum. Thank you very much.